let us um, prepare ourselves as we listen to our gathering music. Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Good morning everyone and welcome to worship, welcome to those here in the sanctuary and welcome to everyone who is joining us on Zoom from the sanctuaries of their home. Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter and this morning we're also focusing on uh, Earth Day which was, of course, last, what was it, last Monday, the 22nd of April, of, yeah, of April. So in our worship service today, we're giving thanks for God's beautiful creation, for the heavens and the earth, and as part of creation, as one creature interwoven with all the other creatures, we human beings, we who have been created in the image of God, have been given the task of caring for creation, of making sure that all things, all living things are able to thrive. And we'll think about, about that in our sermon this morning. Our worship today continues with thanksgiving for baptism. Look, here is water. What is to prevent us for, from giving thanks for baptism? Here is water, rushing water, surging water, foaming waters to wash us clean, to scrub away the guilt, to wipe away the grime of archived fear. Blessed be water. 
We give you thanks, Creator God, for sea and ocean, tides and waves. Here is water, tumbling water, streaming water, free-flowing shower of grace water, bumbling fount to soothe our hearts. Blessed be water. We give you thanks, created word, for rain and snow, storm, storm and, and mist. mist. Here is water, clear water, cool water, quench the thirst of our soul water, still water sparkling with the promise of new life. Blessed be water. We give you thanks, creating spirit, for stream and pool, spring and lake. Here is water through which God created and continues to create. In the beginning, weaving with the breath of life, every living being, bonding all of creation as one. We give, we give you thanks, thanks blessed creator, for the gift of life, for this water without which life would cease, for the gift of baptism, through which these waters birth us again into your promise of newness, wholeness, and oneness. Blessed be creator God, creative word, creating spirit. Blessed be each soul here and not here, one people, one with all that is. Amen. Amen. And now let us stand as you are able and sing our opening song, Earth is Full of Wit and Wisdom. of the Creator inspire us, the grace of the Good Shepherd be with us, and the unity of the breath of life enfold us all. Be so.
Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the creator and the sustainer, one God, now and forever. Amen. And I'd like to invite children to come forward. So good morning, you guys. How are y'all doing? Now, do you know each other's names? No? <laughs> so, Sadie, why don't you introduce yourself? And you are, can you introduce yourself to the people on either side of you? <laughs> so, he's Ren and he likes pickles. And can you introduce yourself? So she's Alice. So we all know each other, right? Sadie, Ren, and Alice. Well, as I said earlier um, at the start of our service, uh, today we're thinking about and celebrating what? Earth Day, right, Earth Day. So on Earth Day, we celebrate the Earth and the fact that God created the beautiful Earth. So what, what specifically do you celebrate on Earth Day? What outside do you celebrate? Oh, no, I'm so sorry. But what about today? What would you celebrate? Because we're, we're thinking about Earth. We're celebrating it today. So on the actual Earth Day, you were at the zoo with the rest of your classmates. Great, celebrating all the wonderful animals, right? The wonderful and beautiful and maybe even scary animals. So what do you, what do you celebrate? What about the, uh, what do you see outside? The earth, you see trees and flowers and bushes, right? There's also, what, what's behind up, what's behind you guys? Some beautiful flowers there, right? And some, uh, what are those green things back there? Palms of some sort? Today we celebrate Earth Day and we give thanks for all of these things. And where did they all come from? What do we, as Christians, we thank who for all of this? God, exactly. We thank God for all of us. And, and we too are created by God, right? Just like everything we see is created by God. And God gave us a special job when it comes to creation, right? Does anyone know what that job is? To take care of creation, to take care of creation. God made us, if you will, the gardeners of creation. What does a gardener do? Yeah, helps it, helps the plants grow and thrive and produce fruit, right? So God made us like a gardener of creation. We take care of creation. Mm -hmm. Take care of the earth. That's what God calls us to do. Now, what are some ways we do that? Alice? Watering plants? Yeah, yeah. Planting trees. Yeah, yeah. And we also make sure the, the uh, plants are healthy, right? Because sometimes, what, sometimes we see, um, well, sometimes we see dirt and, and garbage on the ground, right? And that kind of, we pick these things up and that kind of stuff too, right? Yeah. So there's all kinds of things we do. But the most important thing today is we thank God or God's beautiful creation. And we remember that we are given a job, a task to be gardeners, caretakers of this beautiful creation. Can you fold your hands and bow your head and let us pray. Dear God, we do give you great thanks uh, for your beautiful creation. Your creation speaks to us of your glory and wonder, your beauty. Help us to be faithful in our task of taking care of creation. 
In your name we pray. Amen. Uh, so uh, this is my arrangement of uh, a tune from Peter Gabriel's uh, latest album, which is also called I.O., as in input, output. Oh, there it is on the screen. Um, uh, uh, I.O. appears on a lot of electrical equipment, and uh, uh, he said that it just triggered some ideas about the stuff we put in and pull out of ourselves in physical and non-physical ways. That was the starting point of this idea, and uh, also talking about the interconnectedness of everything. Uh, if, if we can see ourselves as better connected, still messed up individuals, but as part of a whole, then maybe there's something to learn. So I thought this would be a really good fit for Earth Day because uh, it has the repeated line, I'm just a part of everything. I'm just a part of everything I stand on two legs and I learn to sing It's not what was said and it's not what I heard I walk with my dog and I whistle with the bird So we think we really live apart Cause we got two legs, a brain, and a heart We all belong to everything To the octopus suckers and the buzzard's wing To the elephant's trunk and the buzzing bee's sting I'm just a part of everything I learn like a seed, spread out my tubers wherever I need. I find any way to attach and connect, and I run like water, no cause or effect. over and the warmth is run out love will be flowing I have no doubt with the vehicle in neutral and the ground to be faced I'll be all laid to rest in my proper place
Today's reading is found in the first book of John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not know love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God if we love one another. God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we are able or abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit and we have seen and do testify that the father has sent his son as the savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear for love, but perfect love casts out fear for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Let us stand for the reading of the gospel. According to St. John, the 10th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, 
our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. On this Earth Day Sunday, I'm going to start at the beginning, talking about the main image from our gospel reading and about how that image relates to Earth Day and our responsibility for creation. As we just heard, the analogy from John is all about Jesus as the shepherd of the sheep, the good shepherd. And because Israel, for much of its history, was a nomadic people, this image goes back to the very beginning, back to the one of two creation stories from the very first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. Now, does anyone remember how the first creation story begins? In the beginning, right. Or in another translation, when God began to create the heavens and the earth, it all starts with God, and then with the heavens and the earth. The heavens are everything above the earth, and the earth is everything below the stars, or that place where human life can thrive. Seen as a whole, the primary theme of this first creation story is that God is a kind of artist, creating out of chaos a beautiful, hospitable place. God creates a habitat, a home, a place for all creatures to live and to thrive. Laying down the conditions of life, God establishes the rhythms of evenings and mornings and space and the expanse of the firmament and land and sea. And then God creates the earth to bring forth plants and fruits and seeds. And then come the birds and the fish and the land-based creatures, including finally a creature made in God's own image. That is, a creature made capable of serving as a kind of governor, or caretaker, or steward of creation. God makes us, humankind, Responsible for creation's flourishing. Humanity will have dominion, God says, over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and the creatures of the land. Over the years, however, some Christians and critics of Christianity have understood this idea of dominion as though it were a free pass to take and to devastate the world's creatures, for our own purposes. But this is a misunderstanding. Remember that we are created in the image of God. God does not devastate and destroy. On the contrary, God is gracious and a creative host of the world's creatures. And so we humans created in God's image would likewise be gracious and creative and hospitable, providing and maintaining as best we can the conditions for life to thrive on this earth. In the image of our gospel reading, we're made to serve as a shepherd of the world's creatures. We're created to care for the earth, to shepherd its creatures, to help all of them thrive. Now amazingly, in the second creation story, and how many knew there are two creation stories at the beginning of Genesis? This one begins in, I think, verse 5 of chapter 2, or the end of verse 4 of chapter 2. Well, in the second creation story, this theme is doubled down upon, except this time humanity is cast as a gardener. The second creation story begins not with a lush paradise, but with a muddy wasteland. There's nothing living 
or growing until God creates Adam to serve the ground, to take care of the earth. Placing Adam in the Garden of Eden, God gives us the responsibility, it says, of tilling and keeping. But tilling also means serving, serving, keeping, and caring for this beautiful garden that God has created. So in these first couple chapters of Genesis, humanity is introduced as the creatures created and called to guard, to shepherd, to care for the whole earth, all of it, from the ground and soil to the plants and creatures to the atmosphere and to the air. Of course, there is a problem in that second creation story, right? Something happens. Something happens. We turn away from the calling, the storyteller says, in a conversation with, who do we converse with? In the tree, that serpent, right? The serpent leads us to distrust God. As a result, we hide and we blame. And we effectively abandon our responsibilities. And so as any gardener knows or any shepherd of a flock understands the survival and flourishing of the garden and the flock suffer. The beautiful, hospitable, hospitable creation is diminished. The conditions of the earth decline. It's as if the gardener has deserted the garden and the shepherd has abandoned the flock. And yet, even here, there are glimmers of hope and redemption. The story of this falling away from our true calling doubles as a kind of blueprint for the restoration, for our restoration and renewal. What we need is a master gardener to show us the way, a good shepherd to guide us home. And isn't that what we get in our gospel reading, in the story of Jesus? On our celebration of Earth Day, we followers of the Good Shepherd, of Jesus, we give thanks for the whole world that God has made. As Christians, we see and experience creation as a neighborhood full of divine love, not only love for humanity, but love for all creatures, great and small. It's a kind of global gallery filled with works of divine art. And we move forward each day based on forgiveness, the forgiveness and salvation of Jesus to follow the example of the Good Shepherd living out our calling to be the gardener of creation and the Good Shepherd of all living things. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith together. We believe that God creates all things, renews all things, and celebrates all things. We believe Earth is a sanctuary, a sacred planet filled with God's presence, a home for us to share. We believe that God became flesh and blood, became a piece of Earth, a human being called Jesus Christ, who lived and breathed and spoke among us, suffered and died on a cross for all human beings, for all creation. We believe that the risen Jesus is the Christ at the core of creation, reconciling all things to God, renewing all creation and filling the cosmos. We believe the Spirit renews life in creation, groans in empathy with a suffering creation, and waits with us for the rebirth of creation. We believe that with Christ we will rise, and with Christ we will celebrate a new creation. Let us pray. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Shepherding God, gather your church whenever we wander from you and from one another. Empower our church in ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. God of grace, we bring our prayer to you. Nurturing God, preserve the health of biomes and ecosystems, inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for your creation, that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace, we bring our prayer to you. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and to use such power for good. God of grace, we bring our prayer to you. Renewing God, <clears throat> you have washed us through baptism. We remember those celebrating their baptismal anniversaries, especially Faith Mooney and Susan Morrow. Bless their lives and stir in their hearts passion for the ministry to which you have called them. God of grace, we bring our prayer to you. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or com compromised immune systems, especially Leroy Rittenbach, Martha Schmidt, Isa Haggerty, Ruth Ann Henderson, Annegret Rose, Annegret Rose, and we remember Cornell's church this morning also. Then those we name before you out loud or in the quiet of our hearts. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. God of grace, we bring our prayer to you. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you. Invite us to more deeply love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. God of grace, we bring our prayer to you. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Would you share that peace with one another? Peace, everyone. Peace to you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. The congregation may be seated, and uh, I invite you to turn to the back of your bulletin. The last few pages have a number of announcements on them, as well as some information. Uh, I would just like to highlight a few of them. I know the folks were here doing the uh, burrito roll yesterday. Is there a number that we achieved? I heard a record was set yet again. 180, 180 burritos were created yesterday. Thank you, thank you. And this is for the folks at the Brown House, right? Oh, and Voyager Carmel, so wonderful, wonderful. Um, also, uh, please note that the men's lunch meets uh, not this, yes, this Thursday, right? Is May already, May 2nd, this Thursday. Um, and you can see we're meeting at Tutu Lounge, which was formerly uh, boogie, bogeys, bogeys, bogeys <laughs> too. Why did I say that? Um, so where that restaurant was on 4th Street, um, we're going to go there and check it out. So please, all the men in the congregation are welcome to join us. Um, I'd also like to uh, let folks know that yesterday we had uh, seven young people here for a Holy Communion class, and um, we also made bread under the expert guidance of Jim and Bev. Where's Jim? There's Jim back, back there. And we not only made bread um, for Holy Communion, but we also made little loaves for each of us. And um, one of the students, Alice, um, who's here this morning, she wanted to donate her small loaf for Holy Communion this morning. So the loaf that she rolled and made and baked will be the one I hold up this morning. So thank you very much, Alice. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Then let us prepare for Holy Communion. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give God, God thanks, thanks and, praise. and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin and who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
I invite those at home to raise their piece of bread. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. For those at home, I invite you to eat of the bread of life. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For those at home, I invite you to drink of the cup of salvation. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. One of the first things Jesus did after the resurrection to, was to eat with his disciples. Jesus was always telling the left out and the ignored, the hurting and the hungry, the sick and the hopeful, I have a seat saved for you. Friends, this is why we come to this table. We come to remember, to be close, and to get a taste of the kingdom of God. So come hungry and come seeking. Christ always has a seat saved for you.
Let us stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Little children, sheep of the Good Shepherd, as we journey toward the fold, we travel through the valley of shadow, growing in grace, becoming a blessing. Baptism, baptismal wells restore our souls. A rich feast is spread by divine abundance, and divisions end as our cup overflows. Amen. gently on this planet's green pasture. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.